I watched a trailer the other day for a film. The film in question was called Mufasa. The purpose of the film appears to be, according to what the preview trailer told me, to explain the origins of Mufasa the Lion, father of Simba the Lion. You know, the one where... <laughs> That one. Now, this trailer um, took me aback. First of all, because it looked like absolute crap. We'll get into that in a minute. So, um, Mufasa the Lion King. This is a new movie that's coming out from Disney Studios, and um, it is going to be released this December. Um, guess a little advertisement for it if any of you wanted to go see it. But uh, this film is going to, once again, explain the backstory that we were all clamoring for, for Mufasa the Lion King. Um, and what took me aback uh, about this trailer, um, aside from the fact that it looks terrible is the fact that um it uh showed the the backstory of Mufasa that I had just been waiting like this kept me up at night um like I would be up at night I was up all last night in fact thinking about oh like what were the childhood days what were the cub days of Mufasa like that that is what has kept me up for years and so I was so thrilled to see this trailer and um in the trailer it reveals something shocking about Mufasa actually that he is actually an orphan yeah I, uh, th that was never inferred, by the way, by the uh, original Lion King. Um, he was king of the Pride Lands, and he had a brother, and he was king over the brother. And that's like, you know, the main plot point of the film. Uh, that you know, the, the the fact that these that the evil brother is jealous of the k kingdom, the the power that his actual brother owns, and and you know, you kind of have to be a biological. Uh, uh, siblings for that to happen, you know, uh, for some reason though, uh, Scar looks like the odd one out of that family, yet, uh, now we're hearing that Mufasa is the adopted one. Exactly how did Mufasa become king then? You know, that usually works a different way. It's usually, you know, who's ever the biological predecessor becomes king, but, um, uh, Mufasa's an orphan now, and, uh, I guess that's why this movie had to be made, because we had to know that Mufasa was an orphan all the time, because we were really, 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 really invested in Mufasa's backstory. So um, this is why the movie had to be made, because we had to know this fact. So um, we get into the trailer, and once again, uh, this trailer looks disgusting. I That is a harsh term, but it's true. And you'll, you'll understand, I'll explain to at the end of why I'm being so harsh in this video. This trailer, I don't think I've seen anybody go harsh enough on. It's like, it's like if a child took a pale crayon and a bunch of brown crayons and smudged it all together, and this is the color palette of the movie. Like, I didn't want to look at the screen. Like, <coughs> Mufasa did that. Anyway, um, so this Mufasa trailer, um, it, it looks like just browns and shades of white somehow. And it, it just is disgusting to look at. And it's like, how do you do this with the African plains? Like, just watch even the Discovery Channel and how, how they portray the African plains. And this is just gross looking. And the... the I, I don't know if they went on location to shoot anything for this movie, but if they did, they failed themselves because everything looked like it was CG in this. I don't know. It just all looked so fake. And and we've got a bunch of CG lions with no expressions on their faces, and they all look the same running around. And it it's just like... It's sludge is what it is. It's it's like, why, why did you make this... this thing that I hesitate to even call a film. And what I noticed about the trailer, apart from the ugliness and the Mufasa is an orphan now, which makes no sense, I noticed that um, it, it, it just seemed like it was trying to look identical to The Lion King, like the first Lion King, uh, 2019, I meant, I meant the live, the live action one. Um, it, it, like, the, there's a scene of Mufasa running around with who is presumably another female lion cub, and I'm like, you're just trying to, they're, they're running across hippos, and it's like, you're just 
just trying to copy the Lion King because that is what this movie is. It's like, oh, the Lion King made lots of nostalgia money in 2019, so we need to create a prequel for the film uh, uh, um, in order to capitalize that on that. It's, it's like just the most soulless sludge possible. I don't know what story here was worth telling so that we can understand the backstory of Mufasa, the retcon of Mufasa as an orphan so that that won't make sense for the Lion King so that we can get to the moment when he dies. The backstory of the character whose purpose was to die. <laughs> And the director of this film had the gall to come out and say that this is not a soulless film. That people, the reason people come back to the, the this film over and over again is because of the power of the story, the creativity. People go back to the original Lion King for that because the characters actually were well designed. The backgrounds, like the, the Lion King in the 90s one, the original animated Lion King is gorgeous. It is gorgeous in the way it portrays the African plains. It is the storytelling of Hamlet. That it was the 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 soundtrack from Hans Zimmer, the, the 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 part where he sees his father in the sky for the vision, um, and the remember who you are score brimming up. That is art, and the reason, like, when this trailer came out, I was gonna do a video, and then I thought. No, I just feel exhausted from all of this. Does anyone care anymore? And then this week, I was watching The Hunchback of Notre Dame. And I've... This is the Disney version I'm talking about. I've always loved that movie. And it's ironic that it has had some haters over the years. And a lot of people who defend it. But I was watching The Hunchback of Notre Dame. And the opening with the bells of Notre Dame zooming in on Notre Dame itself... into this like big opera uh, expressing what happened in the beginning and how the opera voices swell up when Frollo is about to um, put Quasimodo down into the well. It, it is like the feelings that that animated movie gives me and the, the topsy turvy, the, the animation on Esmeralda and the, the jokes in the movie, the jokes that actually land an underrated character in Phoebus. Look at that disgusting display. Yes, sir. And God help the outcasts is just such an amazing song. And just listen to these lyrics. This is the kind of stuff that Disney used to put out. And uh, like this, like for all the criticisms of Disney throughout the decades, they have some of the most incredible movie making pieces out there. So the most, the most, they are the house of animation. They have the most incredible animation. And even for a movie like The Hunchback of Notre Dame that had some people um, launching criticisms against it, you just look back at it and see how amazing it is and how far Disney has fallen from that. It will just, it just, you know, it's heartbreaking. I like my heart was broken watching The Hunchback of Notre Dame because it made me think of how far um, Disney has fallen. And for that uh, director who was trying to defend this movie uh, for the, the Mufasa, um, like I, I, I feel bad for them because, you know, these are just people who are commissioned to make this stuff. I don't think that this is anyone's heart and soul is in making this stuff. 
y y if you watch like original special features, like the other day my sister was telling me about how she was watching the special features on Bambi. They were talking about how they had a Chinese artist who had nothing and he came in and he said, I can animate and he helped them animate deer realistically for the first time and he became one of the most renowned animators of all time. And you think of the Disney Renaissance with stuff like Hunchback of Notre Dame and The Lion King and Beauty and the Beast and the, the, the animation style of those films and the emotions that they would bring out and uh, the emotions of Pixar films, how those films always would make you cry. And, you know, that makes me just go, you know, all these people, you know, lambasting Disney. I am not saying that it, is, oh, it has ever been a perfect company with perfect people at it. But if you just watch those original interviews, the passion that people actually had for these projects that you can see come out on the screen and now how soulless everything is. Yes, there have been soulless films and coming out from Disney before and there were even in the 90s, but now this is all it is. They're, they're repurposing a Moana Disney Plus show to be a movie because they have nothing to come out and they think that we won't notice that. Uh, uh, you think it's going to be good after all the stuff that they put on Disney Plus? This is just some of the most disheartening stuff that I've seen as a film and an animation fan. That this is how far this company, this behemoth of animation, uh, has fallen. And it, it's like, this, this, this isn't a joke. This should be taken seriously just to see like how bad it's gotten and like a wish went through another round of videos I saw come out for it from people trying to rewrite the script or talk about what doesn't work from that film because I guess you know it came out on Disney plus and and the physical media recently more people would have seen it um even just from pirating it I guess and it's another round of just like the misery of what this company has become in its current state where there's nothing to be enjoyed and there's no passion from anyone making this stuff and you can see that and but there's no desire to fix anything from it i don't want to make videos about how disney sucks now i used to love going to disney movies you know whenever they would come out and now it's like no one cares because this is what this company has become and it's about time it stopped being more about like jeering at the company or, um, you know, laughing at it or, and, and to be more like, no, Disney is like this important thing. It was this important house of animation that created these important works. Like I, I would see Snow White, the original one, Cinderella, you know, Snow White coming out in the Great Depression and everyone said it was going to fail. It was the very first, um, a uh, theatrically animated movie. Uh, uh, Disney created the very first animated cartoon with sound. They were the ones who figured out how to do that. In fact, this is not a time to jeer at this for happening or laugh at it. This is a time to take it really seriously and just look at how this company has fallen and get through to somebody to see that. And it's not going to be profitable, this Moana 2 or Mufasa, because everyone sees that and everyone's moved on. You're not going to have, you know, 2019 was probably the last time you could do this where you could really milk the nostalgia. You're not going to have parents who are just struggling to get by, dropping $50, $100, $200, however much the tickets and the food costs at the same time to bring their kids to Mufasa. But well, that that's what I want to get at here. And, you know, the worst thing I could possibly do in this video is just portray clips from God Help the Outcasts versus what Disney has become now. Because it's like a, the biggest gut punch. The biggest gut punch ever to just play clips of what Disney used to be versus what it is now. And maybe that will get somebody to maybe do a double take who, who, who is around Disney and just realize that the reason why Disney movies are not selling right now, they did this to themselves. And there needs to be a big wake up from that. Uh, anyway, thanks you all for watching. Um, thank you patrons as always for supporting this channel. Um, if you want to check out my own short films and leave critique or like on that. Thank you. Um, that's all I got for you guys today, and I will see you guys next time.